Welcome back guys, John here, House Things. I'm bringing you the fifth video in the running injury series today and it's going to be about pain at the back of the knee and the back of the thigh. Yeah, it's the dreaded hamstring muscle tear. Like most people have had something similar, uh, I'm not sure if everyone has rehabbed it correctly. Because recently we've got really good research coming out showing us how to perfectly rehab the hamstring. And this is important because we know that having had a hamstring tear in the past puts you at a bigger, bigger risk of having it again in the future. Uh, as does having you know, poor hamstring eccentric strength, which we'll explain, and also having poor pelvic control hip muscles. So we'll go through the steps to take from the moment the hamstring tear happens to getting you back doing what you do best Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. You made me come out here in my shorts. It's December the 16th, 9 a.m. It's freezing. But I'm going to show you what a hamstring tear looks like. So once you settle down, you stop jumping around like a one legged bandit. You're going to want to know what to do then. Pain is, a, is, is your guide, it's going to protect you. So that's why, you, that's why you're going to limp. Uh, you're gonna hold your leg, you're gonna uh, protect it. And, and that's expected for the first, you know, three, four days. You, you, you may well, sometimes your hamstring tear might be bad enough that you might need crutches. Usually not. You're just gonna limp and then you're gonna find that normal walking as best as you can, as soon as you can. But there are then, if we start our hamstring rehab from day one, you make a much better recovery and you all, and if you do the rehab correctly you then you minimize that risk of future and uh, hamstring injury so the first thing we're going to say is uh, rest it ice you know compress it uh, just try and reduce inflammation and then you're going to do what we call the ASCLING protocol and I'm going to take you through that now so lying on your back with the injured leg in your in your hands are like this and we're gonna basically we're gonna just straighten the knee uh, but you need to stop before you feel any pain whatsoever so it's also important to you know, get moving it on a bike if you can if you can get on a stationary bike without pain go for it another good one to do in the early stages is called an isometric contraction of the hamstring you can lie on your back you dig your heel into your bed and you pull your heel into the bed, causing a contraction here. Holding it for 10 seconds if you can and relax. Repeat this throughout the day as much as you want. So at this stage you should be starting to walk a bit easier. You may be around day 5, 6, 7. Everyone's different. But now you want to add in what we call the diver exercise. So it's uh, you're standing on the affected leg. You're, you're bending your knee a small bit and then you're diving into a swimming pool. It's all coming from your hip, your knee stays the same and then you come back up. Uh, again, you can progress it by adding a weight into your hand and going deeper into the dive. So start to introduce bridging. Uh, what you can do is put the affected leg on a step and then just lift up through this. Okay, you can do this 10 reps, 3 sets. Again, not into pain. And then to progress this, you swap the step for a chair. Now you've got a straighter knee, that's the difference. Higher, straighter knee. And then you're lifting up. This is putting more demand on the hamstring. This is another one of the Askling protocol exercises. It's called the slider. You find a slippy floor, the wall. And then you put your affected leg here and you're just sliding back with your non-affected leg in the wall. Slide back. And bring it back up. So your typical hamstring tear, your, your grade two moderate one, will take about four to six weeks, but that doesn't mean that you have to wait until the fourth week before you start running. So we should have been running all the way through our rehab when we could uh, with no pain and when you can run at 70% of your maximum speed with no pain then that's that's your sign that you're ready to start your sprinting training now you don't go all out full sprint but you introduce a sprint 
and you build up that way as well. So we mentioned in the videos about eccentric strength, which was the, the diver and the slider. Uh, that's very important because that's what protects you, especially from another injury. Uh, you've got the famous um, Nordic exercise, which I'll show you in the next clip. But I also just want to stress how important it is just to get your hamstring physically strong as well. And a leg curl machine in the gym is perfect for that. And just build up the strength. Uh, always single leg strengthening. Never put both legs in because then your, your, your non-injured leg will take over. So single leg there. So the single most important thing you can do to complete your rehab is to introduce these Nordic uh, eccentric exercises. Uh, these have been shown the world over how important they are at reducing your risk of re-injury. You're on your knees and then you're slowly as you can lowering yourself to the ground and lifting back up again. Slowly lowering yourself down to the ground and lifting back up again. I hope it should never happen yet but if you ever find yourself doing that one-legged painful dance then check in with this video, it should get you through. If you need any more assistance, get in touch with me through lifefitphysio.ie. Next week we're going to do pain in the hip. Ciao for now.